It's only spring training, but every time Mark McGuire comes to the plate, cameras flash, fans rise, and so do the expectations that he'll make this baseball season every bit as magical as last year's. And hitting three home runs in his first four spring games certainly hasn't done anything to dispel that notion either. With opening day just weeks away, the man we call Big Mac seems once again poised to make history. Before Mark McGuire was rewriting baseball history with his assault on Roger Maris's home run record, before he was dazzling fans just by taking batting practice, and before he was a park car's biggest nightmare, the six foot five, 250 pound, 20 inch bicep, 538 foot hitting home run king was a pitcher. Growing up in the Los Angeles suburb of Claremont, he and his four brothers played a lot of baseball, but it was Mark who always wanted to be on the mound. From Little League to his days at Damien High School, up until his sophomore season at USC, McGuire dreamed of being a major league hurler. Some dreams die hard, some take years to realize, and some get altered and then explode. Hitting 70 home runs has done a lot for Mark McGuire's popularity. He's been on everything from Wheaties boxes to David Letterman. Now, what is your favorite pitch, Dave? What are we looking at? Anything that's over the white part of the plate. <laughs> <laughs> to modeling Chrysler's at a car show, and he's even been painted by Leroy Neiman. But believe it or not, there was a time when the public and the posing pitchers had never heard the name Strong. Mark McGuire. 2-2 two -two pitch, strike. Free call has walked out the outside corner. You better learn to follow that off or hit it, kid, or you'll be back in uh, Tacoma. He didn't go back to Tacoma. And in his first full season with the Oakland A's, he knocked out a league leading 49 home runs and earned American League Rookie of the Year on it. Two years later, he added a World Series title to his resume. But throughout his 11 years in Oakland, McGuire was a mainstay on the disabled list, missing 40% of his games during one five-year stretch. Things got so bad that he contemplated retirement. Personally, Mark struggled as well, going through a divorce from his wife and the resulting separation from his son, Matt. The Oakland A's traded Mark McGuire to the Cardinals. Then, on July 31st, 1997, Mark was forced to move even further away from his son when he was traded to the St. Louis Cardinals, where he made an immediate impact. hitting 24 homers in the remaining 51 games. That kind of year is hard to top, but as we all know now, it's possible. Oh! In the field, number 70! But what McGuire accomplished with a wooden stick could only be matched by what he accomplished with his class and grace. Does that work? I recently had a chance to talk to a very loose and relaxed Mark McGuire from the Cardinals training camp in Jupiter, Florida. I realize this is a wide open question here, but if you could point to the most significant change, how has your life changed the most since what you accomplished last year? It hasn't, Chris. It hasn't changed. It. Oh my God, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's changed uh, for the positive, to tell you the truth. Um, the tremendous stories that people all across America have told me that uh, the impact I've had on their lives has just been outstanding. Have you had a chance to, uh, to either watch the, the tapes of, of the home runs or just yeah. kind of sit back and think about it? What do you think when you see that? I'm still amazed to think that's me running around the basement because, you know, I remember when Hank Aaron hit 715 and, and I was watching a nationally televised game against the Dodgers and Al Downing and he hits the home run he's running around the bases and He's shaking all the Dodgers' hands and, you know, fans come running on the, the field. And I had the same feeling when I looked at my tape, running around the bases and shaking the Cubs' hands and giving them hugs and having my teammates meet me at home plays was a great feeling. Uh, people tell me it's tougher to stay on top than to first get there. And so now that you've been there, uh, the obvious question is, what, what do you do next? <laughs> Keep playing a game of baseball. That's all I can do. I mean, what, la what happened last year was magical. Will it ever happen again? Who knows? Can it be done again? Who knows? You know, that, that's unrealistic expectations by people if they're going to think that I'm going to hit 70 every year from here on in. It's not going to happen. But what people can be sure of is Mark's devotion to ending child abuse. Uh, it's going to have to, it's going to be dealing with uh, hopefully uh, 
sexually and physically abused children. Uh, children, uh, wow. I will do everything in my power to, to start my foundation to help them out. Now, I want you to clarify, because some people I think think that you were uh, abused as, no. as a child, and that is not the case, but why no. is this such an important charity for you? For some reason, this stuff is happening too much, and there's a not enough set out there. And for me to, to step forward and to be a precedence here and, and, and to have the awareness out there for these children to go to people and to, to get help, because they're not being allowed to be the young adults and going into adulthood like they should be, and it's sad. Now, and you have a son of your, of your own, obviously. Is that the one frustration uh, in your life or the most uh, frustrating thing for you is that you can't spend more time with him? Oh, yeah, definitely. But you know what? It's the way that it's always been ever, ever since that, uh, I got divorced. And I, I can't ask for a better situation. I have an absolutely wonderful ex-wife. She's got a beautiful husband, Tom. They have a beautiful three-year-old daughter, Shelby. And, uh, you know, it's almost like we're a big happy family. I'm, I'm over there uh, more than I'm at my house. All right, let's talk about the uh, briefly the Andrestein Dion issue, and I know you're going to love this. But uh, the simple question I have is, could you be the home run hitter you are if if you didn't take this? Oh yeah, without a doubt. Okay. And without a doubt, are you concerned that you might influence young people to take this? No, because I don't endorse the product. I don't endorse it. I'm not out there publicizing anything. You know, for the perception of people to think that you take a pill and it helps you hit a baseball. <laughs> they could, should go get their head examined <laughs> because uh, if that was the case there'd be a lot of more guys hitting 70 home runs than, than just me. <laughs> and so how about this, you're probably the only guy that got to kiss Helen Hunt and the Pope in the same year. Boy, what, can you ask for anything else? That's pretty good. Yeah, that was a great thing. Hey, I'll tell you what, Helen Hunt had great soft lips and the Pope had soft hands. <laughs> How about long-term goals, Mark, in terms of your, your career? Uh, you're in the books for something like this, the Hall of Fame, uh, amassing a certain number of home runs before you decide to, to retire. Have you thought about that? You, you must have. Well, I know, I know a lot of people have talked to me about going to the Hall of Fame, which is great, and, you know, it's going to be a total honor. But that, hopefully that's quite a few years away. Uh, right now, I can only look for what I'm going to do this year. I think I've set the president for hitting 50. If I do hit 50 this year, that means I reached the 500 plateau, which is, for me, I think it's unbelievable for what I've gone through in my career. So I'd be really happy with that. If Mark McGuire does make it to the Hall of Fame, it won't be the first time he's been to Cooperstown. Back in 1984, McGuire, the college student, paid a visit while playing on the U.S. Olympic baseball team. And the story goes, he stepped inside the hallowed halls, quickly looked around, and left out of boredom. Seems uh, young Mark was much more interested in grabbing a pizza at a nearby restaurant than soaking up baseball history.